this is our review and specs video for the Topps Knives Brush Wolf, uh, designed by myself, Aaron Morgan, and my brother, Nate Morgan. We submitted the design to Topps probably two years ago. We were posting all the photos all the time and just got to know the guys and then met them at the shows and then started talking about this design. This is kind of our version of what we think a survival bushcraft tactical, if need be, one tool option knife. Like this is what we came up with and what we like to use um, through a lot of trial and error and using different knives. And we still like to use different knives, but this is kind of what we came up with. Now for some of the specs and some of the usage. So here's a close up of the knife made by Topps Knives. We named it after the coyote, the brush wolf, the trickster, the song dog. Coyotes are very diverse and they, you know, traverse different kind of environments. And, uh, you know, they're spotted deep in the forest, deserts, grasslands, swamps, even in the cities, in your backyard or in the alley, you know, behind your local coffee shop or your favorite lunch spot. They're just found in the most random places. This knife will help anyone thrive in those liminal spaces on the edge of the city or new territory you've yet to explore. And that's what Hotner is about is, you know, getting out and exploring, getting out with friends, fellowshipping out in the woods. We have an overall length of 12.13 inches. So it's a foot long. We have a six and a half inch blade length with a 6.25 cutting edge from right where the grind starts at the Ricasso up to the tip. It's 3 16 thick, 1095 high carbon steel. Rockwell is 56 to 58. That's pretty much what Topps does uh, standard. Super good edge retention, differentially treated. So the thing's a tank. It excels in everything, like in our book. This is why we designed it this way and why we're stoked that Topps built it. It's got the acid rain finish with the clear coat and then um, it's really cool to see our logo on it right here so this is actually a flower that our great 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 grandfather discovered it's called Houghton's goldenrod it only grows up on the northern tip of Michigan the the species name is uh, Solidago Houghtoni so it's pretty cool so we couldn't get away from the flower um, and it's it only grows there it doesn't grow anywhere else in the world so it's a really cool wildflower up in Michigan. So we wanted our, our roots in Michigan to be known. And then we've got the handle scale, olive green canvas micarta. And we have ambidextrous bow drill divots on either side for doing friction fire. We have the exposed pommel. The top end of the pommel actually lines up with the tip so it's actually really good, it stays on center. If you're doing holes for notching, it, it just drills right through. We'll show that out in the field later. The knife weight, and you can see the balance here. The balance is pretty sweet. It's a little front heavy, so the balance point's actually like right here. It's got a little bit more front heaviness to it, just for chopping. It's 11.7 ounces, which we're really stoked on it, how it came out at that weight. We thought it was gonna be a little heavier with the sheath, which is six ounces, which is also mine and Nate's design. We wanted like the square traditional dangler bushcraft sheath. The sheath is six ounces. So the knife with the sheath weighs in at 17.7 ounces. Our great, 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 great grandfather, Douglas Houghton, he's super famous in Michigan. He was a doctor, a dentist, an early explorer. He mapped out the entire, the whole Michigan coastline, um, discovered copper in the, in the Upper Peninsula. He was the state geologist as well. Um, this guy was only 36 years old and it seems like he lived four lifetimes. He actually drowned in Lake Superior when he was 36 years old. Their boat capsized. So me and my brother thought, you know, we need to start a company that's tied to our family legacy. And so we kind of like that whole era, like the fur trade era, because he was like 1820-ish to 40. I think he died in 1836. So anyways, we like the whole fur trade era, like Native Americans. Michigan's got a lot of rich history. And so we were also reading some stuff on George Washington Sears, 
uh, Nesmuk. So we like the design, the blade is super functional. And so we wanted to stretch one out and make it more of like a survival knife, a chopper, a stabber with a 90 degree spine section with a sawtooth section. So this is where we landed at. Here's one of the, the reasons me and Nate went with the Nesmuk shape. So here's one of my other like traditional Nesmuks from um, Pathfinder Knife Shop. But the reason we, we stretched out the Nesmuk is because of how functional the blade is and how easy this blade shape is to maintain. So after you go and beat on it in the field and you wanna hone your blade, you can just, you can run it easily on a strop, a stone, a belt, whatever you wanna do, or whatever your sharpening system is, it's super easy to do. All I've ever done is um, just kind of like deburred on a ceramic rod and then I strop it on leather about 10 passes or so and this, this edge comes right back. So you want to make sure you're holding it at your 25 degree angle and you can just go right along that sweep right to the tip and this sucker stays razor sharp all the time and especially from what you've seen in the, the video I've beaten on this thing super hard and I've been using this prototype for over a year really hard and I've never even gotten a, a nick in the edge. And that's just kind of a testimony to um, the Topps Heat Treat, uh, how good their, their edge retention is on their 1095. So that's why we like this blade. It's super versatile, very easy to sharpen. Um, and just, just keep it dialed. We've got to clear a tree off the, off the trail. And so wanted to show that even though it's a mid-sized knife, it excels in chopping with the Topps High Saber Grind and the 56 to 58 Rockwell. It's got really good edge retention. So we got to go clear a, clear a tree off the trail real quick. The, the handle, we went a little slimmer because we wanted to keep the weight of the knife down. So the weight of the knife is 11.7 ounces. And a lot of guys were like, the handle seems a little too small, but it is just right for the weight. It hooks up good, it moves a little bit on the chopping, but then again, we were going for the lightweight, so. All right, so I just beat that tree in half. My hand was sweating, so the knife was moving a little bit in my hand, but you don't really ever have to do that. But I wanted to show that this knife can take it and this edge is still hair popping sharp. Um, we're gonna go take one more tree down so that we can get some shots with the chopping and how well this thing batons um, with the brush wolf. And you can actually feed like two or three pieces of paracord through it. So I just have a basic overhand knot for three fingers so the knife doesn't fly out of my hand. Here it goes. Here it goes. A lot of people are like, why do you baton with your knife? I say, baton with your knife when you know your knife can handle it. And Topps knives can handle it. I've been beating on these things for six years now. And the Brush Wolf for about a year since I got the prototype. And so we went with this Nesmuk design because we wanted to have some real estate up here. And we actually didn't realize that because of the shape, it creates a nice rocker. So it doesn't like drift when you're splitting wood. So as you can see, this is some wet pine. Like I'm gonna hammer the heck out of this thing. And, uh, but it's made for it. Thank you.
to show is the 90 degree spine on the brush wolf. It's about an inch and a half long section and then the saw teeth and how um, you can start a fire using the teeth onto char cloth and then using the, just the 90 degree spine part for scraping down wood and then just starting the fire using the ferro rod with, uh, with this spot right here. And we spaced the, the thumb rest right on the 90 degree spine and very mild jimping here because a lot of guys complain about aggressive jimping. So we wanted to just put something in for just detail so it's real soft, like I never wear gloves with this thing. And your thumb lands right before the, the saw teeth so I've never like slipped and hit my, the choil's big enough and where your thumb goes I've never slipped onto the, the saw teeth and cut my thumb so that's uh, you know, we, we kind of measured that out when we were designing it and we made our first prototype. We're going to use the brush wolf just to test the edge and um, get these fillets off. So we'll see how it see how it cuts. And um, so this is the fourth grip position on this thing. We recessed the saw teeth so they won't hit your hands. So you can actually, if you're like skinning a deer or a hog, you can get in there and get that tip in there. Um, and then you got, you know, one, two, three to come back for chopping. So. Off big pieces of meat and like getting in there where you got thicker portions to take off I think it would be good like I said I haven't really done that was the first fish I even just cut the fillets off so we're just out here at the beach winging it so we're gonna do some uh, some notching and set up a figure four trap right now. Um, so I'll demonstrate, you know, how the saw back on the brush wolf works uh, for making all your little notches for traps and triggers. So I'm gonna go find some straight pieces of white oak, chop them down, and then we'll start making the trap. 